We're going to come down here to where it says presence. First up is clarity. Clarity, many people like to think that it controls detail um, or sharpness, but it's actually a bit of an optical illusion. What clarity does is it controls mid-tone contrast. So if you take a look at the histogram up here, you'll notice most of the change exists in the mid-tone. And when it's higher, it tends to push the detail a little bit further. And when it's lower, you have less detail. But it generally keeps the white and the black point pretty much the same. I'm going to increase it just a little bit. Um, as a way to bring out a little bit of this low contrast information, uh, but in a way that's not super overwhelming to the image. Now we're going to talk about vibrance and saturation. And before I do that, I'm going to step in and inject a little bit about color. Color is made up of three different elements, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more when we actually get into the color module. Those three elements are hue, saturation, and lightness, or brightness, or luminosity, whatever you want to call it. HSL, hue, saturation, and luminosity. Now, those are the three things that define and make up a particular color. When we are working in a computer space, we are usually working with a computer color space, an editing color space, like an sRGB or an Adobe RGB or a ProPhoto RGB. These are all editing color spaces. And what is unique to those spaces, they are, they are all gray balance, which means any change to overall saturation or lightness affects all colors equally. And changing the saturation slider affects all colors equally. Hue is its position around the color wheel. Luminosity is its brightness or darkness. Saturation is the purity of color. So zero is no purity and 100 is most pure. So if I bring the saturation all the way up, it affects all colors. It generally makes people look super jaundicey and orange. Uh, and then if you bring it all the way down, you end up with a black and white image. Uh, I find that if you're aggressively warming up the image, sometimes a slight desaturation can help the, the colors uh, gel together a little bit more successfully. Because I'm really trying to develop for the skin, and I want the skin to look as realistic as possible. Okay, and that's saturation. It's affecting all colors. Now, photographers, they said, hey, I like the ability to control saturation. I like to give the colors pop, but unfortunately, it makes people look like this. So, is there anything we can do? Vibrance affects saturation, but it preserves skin colors. And so, when you pump it up all the way to the end, it's still a little bit less aggressive in those skin tones. And so you generally can get away with exercising a little bit more of a higher value in a vibrance as you might in a saturation. Now, I also didn't really touch on contrast. That's because, generally speaking, once you do all this, all of these exposures and highlight shadows, you're generally going to have already automatically affected contrast, whether you're aware of it or not. Whereas clarity affects mid-tone contrast, the contrast slider affects the overall contrast. And what it basically does is when you increase contrast, the image from the middle goes outward. And when you decrease contrast, the image goes inward. And that's how you control overall contrast. But if you've already done this, you generally have affected contrast in a way that you're probably pretty happy with already. So I'm not going to do too much to the overall contrast. Uh, I find that generally, once I've already done the rest of the stuff, I'm not really changing too much in the contrast. All right, so I'm just going to tweak this a little bit more and fine tune it. I, I'm a little bit blown out on the highlights. It's starting to look a little bit better. Now, overall, this image is very warm now. I kind of dial that back a touch. And here's my before and after at the moment. And you may have liked the cooler version, and that's totally fine. Uh, but maybe you like the warmer version, and that's kind of what we ended up going with. But the great thing about this is I now have a much better sense of what I'm looking at in the image. 
There we go. Yeah. I generally don't edit with the whole thing, the before and after on the entire time, but I do like to periodically uh, go back and forth and check.